Don't let tomorrow's solutions get stuck on today's obstacles. Help move what matters at Iowa State. Iowa State students have big ideas. My name is Cam Schaefer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Spock Sanctuary, which is a exotic companion animal rescue, and we provide other services in education and nutrition. And it all started with a little help from cyclones like you. What's up, everybody? It is uh, the latest live Cyclone Fanatic podcast we've ever done, that's for sure. And that's okay. I'm I'm excited to be here. It is I just got done watching. That was one of the best. That was one of the best Iowa State basketball games I've ever watched. I mean, it, it was just, I mean, I, I'm sick. I'm sick that Iowa State lost, uh, but I, uh, God dang, that was a really good basketball game. Final, uh, if you guys, maybe you're listening to this, you didn't get to stay up. I mean, it's 11, it's 1130. Iowa State loses to Stanford 87 to 81 in overtime. As that was a game that, oh man. Uh, 7-0 run. Stanford made its last six field goals, just couldn't miss there towards the end, and Iowa State just didn't have enough. We'll bring in Brent Bloom. I want to thank all of our March sponsors uh, here on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. It is expensive flying us all around the country covering these teams. Connor Ferguson, I'm really glad that Bloom and I are doing this show and not making Connor do it because he will be up super late tonight working on that. Uh, Carl Auto Group, Central States Roofing, Country Landscapes, King Project Solutions, Fairway Meat and Grocery, bringing us all of our coverage. Uh, hey, Bloom. Didn't know you were capable of staying up this late. Well done. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just gutted right now. That was, oh, that was brutal. Just... You can't. Mm. You played just great. And... They really did. And, uh, you know. And like Stanford just towards the end just hit so many shots, right? Like, and I don't know what else. I the only thing Iowa State could have done differently is Audie missed a lot of those shots around the basket that she, she normally she makes. Did. And I give Stanford a lot of credit for that, though, the way they deed her up. Yeah, they had length that a lot of people don't. I mean, I mean, part of me though says, there's, Is there any way she only shoots two free throws in a game? You know, but. It looked like a lot of those, there was some contact there, but they were clearly not going to call it. And that's, I mean, I respect it, I guess, because they didn't really call much on the other end either. But They were consistent came, in that front. Yeah, it, it came down to, man, I obviously just made dagger after dagger. And Emily Ryan was, that was a that was a superhuman performance. I mean, that was beyond legendary. What, what she did in that game was... Incredible. Just incredible, considering how she's... I mean, it almost like it's like emotional what she did, but Addie hit some monster shots, but I give I mean, Stanford hit the shots you wanted to take and they made them. And then that area often was just, she was just yeah. too good. I texted a friend with about, I think it was like after the third quarter. And I said, this is the best game Emily Ryan's ever played. Oh, and, and then like five minutes better. later, I was like, what a, a, what a common take. Like, of, of course it is, you know, <laughs> like she was, freaking amazing tonight 36 points 12 of 21 six of nine from three nine rebounds four assists she did have 10 turnovers but she was trying to do a lot out there wow. jackson goes out with the injury right um so i'm yeah, just so did jones i mean that's what's not gonna get jones talked about. Jones, jones yeah, got, good point. Look, at, look look at the minutes look at the minutes for iowa state i mean it's just incredible 44 for Bellinger, 30, 43 for Ryan. That is crazy. And then Bristow comes in and was awesome um, in the third and fourth quarter and into overtime. It's just like, man, Iowa State put everything on the floor. It's just that's why you're just heartbroken for him. But yet it's like you're overwhelmed with pride at the same time because, gosh, if you would have told me, if you'd have told anybody that Audie, Adi, excuse me, would go three for 21. You would have thought you lost by 30. Like that, Guess, honestly. Do you know off the top? Well, we have the stats up, so never mind. Incredible stat here that these teams combined for 36 points in overtime. 
Was it really? Jeez. Yes. Yeah. Stanford had 21, missed. Iowa State had 15 in overtime. I mean, if you're Iowa State, you had to pick your poison. You were getting – I mean, Erie often was just going to work without Crooks in there. You got to give her give her help. And so you – 41 you let, and 16. Yeah. <laughs> you you had to let them shoot, and they made them. I mean, tip your cap. That was uh, that was one of the best games I've ever seen. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I said that right before you logged on. That's uh, one of the best Iowa State sporting events I've ever watched. It, yeah. I mean, it, you are on the verge of just – a storybook legendary game and it still was i mean that's still one of those where shoot you know still super 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 proud of this group i just gutted for them because that's man they literally left it all and several of them are injured now and sheesh it's just brutal thought, brutal brutal I, I thought bristow played awesome she's awesome great minutes tonight <sighs> And that's Bellinger was Bellinger got him off to the good start, hitting yep. those threes early in the first quarter. With the mask on, I mean, there's just so much. And then I just I thought the game plan was great. I mean, there, Iowa State got the ball where they wanted almost every single time, and made a bunch of shots. It's just Crooks just couldn't finish around the rim. I think there's a lot of contact there, like I said, but she just couldn't make enough. And uh, Stanford made the two big shots when it mattered, but. Holy cow! What a game! You want that's to, why that's why we watch college sports right there. So, it was incredible. What, what was Adi on Friday night? Because she was three of twenty one tonight. Like that's that's actually yeah. hard to do. Eighteen to twenty. Yeah. Like so, she had two opposite games. Wild. About it. Wild. But I, I mean, I'm I'm sitting. In my, I'm trying not to wake up my kids for one. But well, you know, my, I kept Elise saying, is keep, still up. <laughs> she watched. <laughs> she said, keep, Honestly, I would I, I keep keep giving the ball to Adi. I thought she was going to get one or at least get fouled, and she just never did. I I don't blame I don't really blame anybody. It just the ball just wouldn't quite drop like it did on uh, Saturday or whatever that was Friday. And uh, what a game! What a weekend! All the way around, I'm exhausted. My only thing, and we're going to move on and do the whole big picture for for everyone here. That when when Brink. I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen a player who's disqualified from the game, like yes. approaching the referee. Yes. The way, could, like, I, what in the hell was that about? How is that not? And then Vanderveer runs on the floor in the middle of the game. Yeah. What? yeah. You, you can't do get that. Get off the floor. And I, and I know Bill won't say anything about it, but I can. Yo, know, Brink, she fouls out and she tells Jesse Dickerson, I'm an amateur lip reader. Okay. So I, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure what I saw. And I'm pretty sure she said, F you. And in my book, that's pretty automatic. And I know the officials were trying to stay out of the way and letting the game be decided on the floor. But at the same time, like, she was throwing, you know, a tantrum every time she didn't get a foul. And then she comes on the floor after she fouled out and yelled again. It's like, come on, get her off the floor. Anyway, I maybe it's just the emotion of it. I get it. But at the same time, I have a hard time thinking if that was just a – the eighth person freshman in your rotation can get away with that telling an official to, you know, cussing at them directly after you file out. I, I, yeah, that, that was the part, like the stuff on the court. I don't really have a problem with. It's like, whatever. We all have different personalities. We all play with passion. When she was fouled out and you're approaching officials, I, like you can't do that. <laughs> can't do, I, and I, I honestly, I, I think those three, the officials made a concerted effort. They were not going to let the whistles, call the game and yeah ultimately the shot making did they you could argue consistent. you're always that argument as well by not make calling fouls or they then determine the game i mean perhaps but they let them play and people crash with the floor all over the place and multiple injuries but they let them play i want to thank our presenting sponsor and we'll get into our more traditional williams and bloom show here we um Again, we're going to be trickling into the Monday hours, which we've, we've never done. We've done late night pods before. We've never done anything like this. So it might get a little weird. I am I am just drinking water, though, to be I'm to apologize to our friends from Cody Road. Well, so hey, I'm going hey, on. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, Bloom's got it. I got the Cody Road. Got the Cody Road. I couldn't make it through that overtime. I had to get I got the the uh, experimental batch. Remember that one? Yeah. I actually 
not to cheat on our friends at um, Westo and Ames Lager, and we'll have an update on them later on. Yes. Um, but my buddy Steve brought me over some of that Lumen, that orange beer. Oh, you know that they got. Yeah. Oh Make my god. Good gosh. beer over there. Lumen had a Lumen had a great weekend thanks to Cyclone Nation as well, and they're making a very nice donation to the collective with Cyclone fans that stopped by. So, but yeah, I couldn't get through that over. I the Cody Road is is. So I, I had that last Good. night after the after the round of 32 win, and I'm going to Boston on Tuesday, so I'm detoxing here for about two That's days. Probably not, That's probably smart. I really, smart. I had a rough. I, it, I'm not doing it in this podcast. Sometime I will tell the story of what happened to me in Omaha, and I was going to ask you, me walking around downtown Omaha at three o'clock in the morning by myself, searching for it. it I'm not going to get into it now. I'm not going to get into it, but holy shit, it, it, it is. I didn't even sleep on Friday night because I was just so distraught. Yeah. So you know what they, uh, we won't get into it. We'll We're going to talk about we'll, the games. No, yeah, we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about season. the games, about how I got robbed in, in downtown Omaha. Omaha. Yeah. Never going back to Omaha after that. <laughs> Sorry, Greg McDermott. I love you. I wanted to thank MechDyne. We're in the Wild Rose Casino Studios. We are presented by our friends at the MechDyne Corporation. Iowa State men are on to the Sweet 16 for the fourth time in 10 years. TJ Otzelberger becomes the first coach in Iowa State history to go to two Sweet 16s, which is still an incredible stat to me. I never would have guessed that, but it is it is factual. It's it is true. quite factual. Um, Brent. We haven't talked. We haven't even so much as texted about this game. It's the first time we've we've spoken. You know, I I was I was watching that game when it felt like Iowa State was going to win it. You know, five to go, whatever. And I I recalled a couple conversations a couple times on this show when we had the conversation. We had to talk about not okay. every game. It, you have to win a clunker or two. In March Madness, they're not yep. going to come eat like there's going to be a game where you're not shooting well and you've got to find a way to withstand it. That's what Iowa State did again. I didn't like the matchup against Washington State. I posted to our premium subscribers on Thursday. I said, I I think I'd rather play Drake um, only because I didn't like that length. I thought that West Virginia felt a little bit like a team of destiny. They're getting kicked out of their conference. Wa- Washington they, State. Yeah. Washington State. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. What did I call them? You call them West Virginia, but that's okay. Well, I got Darren DeVries you on got, the line. Who doesn't? Talking Drake. Right. Um, I didn't like the matchup. I just thought that it would give <laughs> Iowa State problems, and it did for about 10 minutes. But as Milan Mom Chilovich told me after the game, like, hey, uh, yeah, we it took us ten minutes to adjust to their length, and once we figured it out, they did. Iowa State hit the gas and uh, was a much better team from there. But you want a clunker, and that's what we mean. We thought this team would be pretty good in the NCAA tournament because they can win in different ways. And we saw you start three of sixteen, and you win by double digits. Bring it on! Yeah, and I think the cool part was is Iowa State literally did figure it out. Start three of sixteen, you finish forty percent from the floor, fifty yeah, percent from three. 14 of 17 from the free throw line and turned the ball over five times. Iowa State's offensive efficiency actually went up quite a bit with that game. It might not have felt like it, but it was really good because see, if you would have told me Iowa State only turns over Washington State 12 times, I would have said, uh oh, here we go. Yeah. I I, uh, I give them credit for taking care of the ball, but they also, like, offensively, it just wasn't there. Iowa State shut their water off, you know, really from about the five minute mark of the first half on and they didn't have much to go to um but just super impressive it was what made this iowa state team great all year is they just found a way uh you don't necessarily know what way it's going to be but they found a way to do it and then in the second half after you know Keyshawn and Taman really struggled in the first half but boy were they good in the second half yeah and i think that's the credit to this team's stick to and it's just ability to you know, not let the bad times continue and figure it out, get their minds right. And second half, Iowa State played really good basketball. Yeah, I thought so too. And, uh, you know, what I've been in all the Sweet 16 locker rooms, and I, I will say everybody was super happy. But the one two years ago was like, holy shit, like 
we didn't expect to be here. Um, the Correct. one, the Niang broken foot year was like, oh, nobody gave us a chance after George got hurt. This was a much more workmanlike feel in the locker room after that game. The guys were happy. Don't get me wrong. Like they were cheering and, you know, pounding the lockers and playing music and stuff like that. But like, it, it just, uh, I, I really felt like it was totally what they expected to do. They went there to take care of a job. And it was like, okay, we're jumping on the bus. We're getting back there and we're going to start preparing for Illinois. That was the vibe I got. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar to after the big 12 tournament championship. It's like, enjoy it. But also let's get back on the bus. Season's not over yet. We got work to do. And I agree the, you know, the Niang one, um, you know, very much felt like, oh my gosh, how do we just beat North Carolina without George Niang? You know, let's enjoy Cause that was a crazy comeback for one. Uh, yeah. And then Niang, the, 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 the prom first year, Iowa State beat a very average Little Rock team. It was nice, but it wasn't like, okay, you know. And then you had Virginia staring at you in the next bracket, and they were really good. Um, I agree. This, this, It feels like, to me, this team ha- is in command of its destiny more than really about any since that 2000 team. It just seems like – and that doesn't mean they're going to win, but they just feel co- – they have the confidence that they are a Final Four team. That, and I think that takes you places – because honestly, CW, there's 10 minutes left in that game yesterday, and it felt like to me Iowa State was the one saying, "We're too, we're better than you. Let's figure it out." You know, where Washington State was almost like, "Oh my gosh, we're tied," or I don't remember how much time was left, but it was you know relatively close there at the 10 minute mark. And Washington State got super tight. I, it was Iowa State that really put the pedal down, and I think that's the, the mark of a team with some great leadership. And you know, I, I thought it was Taman. Taman again, who did not play great at all in the first half, but just really put everybody on his back, hit a couple dagger shots in the second half, and defensively got a couple of steals. And just like the uh, like the, the K-State game in Kansas City, where it's close, and all of a sudden it's a 10-0 run, and all of a sudden it's not close, and I would say it kind of coast to the, to the finish the, line from there. The Taman step-back threes? Yes. Like, I tweeted this and then I asked him about it and I, I'm going to keep hammering it home though. Do you guys like think back to that game in Greensboro like, a year ago? A year ago. I think he couldn't shoot. It's crazy. Look at his postseason, by the way. Well, I'm yeah. Like he, he's been unreal. Like it, it was going into that game. I, I didn't do the math going into that game. He had, I think 23 assists to three turnovers. Yep. Something like that. Yep. Yep. Four. Four turnovers in the four whole turnovers. season. Okay. I mean, he's it's it's, he only it's won. incredible. He won again. He, and then and I know the guy I want to give so much credit to is Ward. Totally different team when he's out there at this yep. level. And we all love Robert yep. Jones. Huge part of this team. When Ward is at this level. I mean, really, the X factor is here, and like this isn't fair, but you pretty much at this point know what you're going to get from Gilbert, Lipsy, and who's the third? Curtis has been very consistent. Curtis, yes. J- Curtis Thank Jones, you. yeah. But it's Momchilovich and Ward that take the team to a different level. Iowa State doesn't have another guy who can stretch a defense like Momchilovich can. Iowa State doesn't have another guy who can play above the rim and protect the rim like Ward can. Well, now, like if Ward's not picking up fouls the way that he did throughout most of the Big 12 schedule, he's a he totally changes that team on offense yeah. and defense. And I actually thought that he was considerably, Brent, more productive against Washington State than I thought he would be because of that length. There was part of me it's like, yeah, it's easy to do that against South Dakota State, right? You're more athletic, you're bigger. Uh, but he went. I he, he's strong five six games together like this now is what I like. Yep. And yep, he's uh, he, and I and I give him so much credit because he didn't play as much as he wanted to last year, and I'm guessing he didn't play as much as he wanted to this year because of his foot deal. Took him a while to get back to it, and he stuck it out. And he's one of the most important guys on the team heading to Boston. You know the I hope. I hope somebody writes a story about him this week. Maybe give you a little, uh, little heads up on doing that because I think he nobody's really talked about him. Well, Rob, he's got a, a crazy good advance going into South Dakota State. If you missed it, go and okay. check that out. I need to go back. I must have missed visa. that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. He 
we need more of a like deep dive on Hassan. Well, Completely agree. He's, I mean, here's the deal with Hassan. Uh, a year ago at this time, he was out. It was done. He they, he was not going to come back. And I don't know what there was like a seven day period where he just had second thoughts of like, you know what? No, I'm going to stick it out. I want to come back. I'm going to make myself better. And I'm going to help this team next year. And he like flipped a switch overnight where he was not. It was it was done. He was not coming back. Mm -hmm. But they said, all right, are you in? He's like, I'm in. I'm fully in. And he totally committed himself about this time last year. And it has completely paid off. And CW, I don't say this lightly. I think he's a I think he's a borderline NBA player now. You, you can't teach what he does, which is that electric athleticism at 6'9", 6'10", with that. I mean, his wingspan has to be 7'3", 7'4". And you're right. He changed. I, I would say it's down 7 nothing. They get the lob to Ward, and it's almost like, okay, we've got guys too. Like, okay, well, you know, let's, let's figure this thing out. Um, but his story is so neat. He comes from a really small country. Uh, family's not well off at all. And it's one of my favorite things we were able to do through through We Will is the international rules changed enough. We were able to help him when when Iowa State went overseas this year for their foreign trip because you can't pay guys. Well, it's stupid, but long story short. <laughs> it's a really dumb but, rule. <laughs> but he, we were able to take care of him a little bit, and by a little bit, it's not a lot, but he immediately helped his family back home. And so I actually think I think he might get his family to go to Boston, which we were, oh, cool. we were working on a little bit today. But I mean, it's That's awesome. Like, guys, yeah, which is like, Man, you can do some really cool stuff with this anymore, but for him, super quiet kid, just very grateful to be at Iowa State, loves his teammates, loves his coaches, and I think he's turned himself into a professional basketball player after this year. And a year ago, there was a question if he was going to play basketball again. I mean, it's just one of those neat stories that can only happen in college athletics, and I'm just glad he stuck it out because he's making an impact, and he's just a really, really down-to-earth great kid, and it's just one of those cool stories that um, Cycle Nation would be very proud of. Yeah, he he's he's the best. Um, we are gonna we're probably not gonna do a ton on Illinois tonight, just because to be honest, I haven't had a lot of time. I I, I watched them there. I haven't I haven't done too much on them as much as I would like. We'll do that on the midweek pod. Um, yeah, they're I mean, they're 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 playing as well as anybody. I mean, it, well, Connecticut's playing the best, but Illinois is not too far behind. And guess who's in Iowa State's? Well, that again, if you go back to last week, that's what we were upset about. It was not the Omaha draw. It was looking down the road, but I, I'll take my chances with Illinois. I, I like that. I like that matchup better than the Washington State one. Yeah, well, I'll say this. Uh, I like the fact that Illinois had two walkthroughs early. You know, they didn't get tested at all today or yesterday. It was 40 to 10 or whatever. and. Just flat out, Iowa State's physicality is not something they see in the Big Ten. It's not. Now, they have really skilled guys. Terrence Shannon Jr. is an All-American. Um, the, the Coleman Hawkins guy is an All-American. The, the, the combo guard is a really good player. Yeah. But they haven't seen now, – now, but we've seen when teams with skill against Iowa State, CBYU, can give Iowa State problems. So, the, absolutely, there's a road map for Illinois. But I think it'll be really interesting – this game has all the hallmarks of Iowa State needs to jump on them, you know, 12-2, 12-4, something like that. Because once Illinois settles in and gets comfortable, they can be really elite offensively, one of the yeah. best in the country. You just cannot allow them to get into a rhythm. But I, Iowa State's favored for a reason, and Iowa State is favored in this game. Uh, I want to thank our friends at Wiffles Hybrids. Plant your independence. Plant Wiffles, yeah. baby. Oh, Bloom's got the hat on tonight. Yeah. Who's the gentleman I met at Annie's Irish Pub, a Wiffles guy? Ah, oh, gosh, I remember. So it wasn't the early wine. Him. The early wines are everywhere. So it wasn't, it wasn't the early wines. It was, it was somebody else. I, I would have remembered them. Um, let's just do. Let's talk some Big Twelve. I guess is is my point because I think that that can transition into this yes Illinois conversation. Did Houston, Brent, and it was hard to watch that. I had that game on with the women at the same time. Yeah. And I had the women's sound on and all that, so I was just watching it on the smaller TV. Did they, did they catch the officiating crew that we've been scared of, where it's like they're going to call everything? Because Houston had like four guys fouled out in that game. They yes. went in overtime. Is that what happened tonight? Because we, that, that's yeah, that's it, always kind of the fear with Iowa State and Houston, right? It is, and they just don't have depth. And you know, thankfully, Iowa State really hasn't run into that yet either. In fact, no. I thought. 
both the games in Omaha were almost under officiated, which give me that all day. Yeah, no bring the that alternative. On. Bring uh, that on. Bring that on Thursday. Let's go. Oh, that's a huge key. Yeah, I mean, that you're, well, that's you're, that's why I wanted to walk us into the Big Twelve conversation because yeah. I I was already looking forward to that on you, Thursday night. You watch, watch Brad Underwood. He's a wily old guy, that an Illinois coach. He's old, gonna talk. He's gonna talk Oklahoma a lot. State guy. Yep, he's gonna talk a lot about Iowa State's physicality and how the game's called this week. Just just wait. He's gonna prime the pump. He's gonna prime the pump a little bit. I'm just waiting for it. Um. But no, yeah, they did. It was a weird game because uh, Houston's up 12, 13, 14, six minutes left. And AM just went bananas from three for a little bit. And then they just literally attacked the basket, just looking for fouls, and they got them. It was the it was the opposite of the Iowa State women's officiating, where they were just bailing them out left and right, AM. And Houston kind of ran out of bodies, but give them credit. I mean, Shed and Sharp made some big time shots in overtime, and they got over the hump. That was their clunker. Um, yeah, so they got they out. They survived. got out. Thank, thank goodness for Houston and Iowa State saving the Big 12's bacon because it was not a pretty, uh, not a pretty weekend. Well, I, you know, my wife was asking me about that, and she's not a huge basketball fan; doesn't watch all these games. She's like, "Was this a bad?" I, we and I, I said, "Well, it's percentages, really." Yeah, I like it wasn't it wasn't great, like, but like I didn't think Kansas would would make Correct. it. Correct. I certainly didn't think like Texas would make it. TCU no. was never going to make it. No, it was really Iowa State, Baylor, and, Baylor. and Houston, Good and point. they got two of the three. And the and those two realistically have been the class of the field. The whole see, I would have loved to have seen Baylor get in there too, just to represent That's a great more. Point. Yeah, and, and I think shut about up it. those ACC people a little bit, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the I one mean, I, it wasn't catastrophic. I guess no, is what wasn't. I'm trying to no, say. No, you're right. It, I mean, clearly, Iowa State and, and Houston were the best two teams, and both made it. So I don't think you can quibble about that. Although some will tomorrow. Just wait. Oh I guess yeah, it's, guaranteed. I guess it's, it's today now. Um, but yeah, it, it Kansas. Well, did you see what Self said after the game? No, I, I didn't. <laughs> he got some heat. He said, "I've been worried about next year for a month," <laughs> which is like, well. I appreciate your honesty. Coach. We called it. Except <laughs> I thought they did care about the tournament this year. I thought uh, they just didn't care about the rest which, of the regular I think, season. I think if you look under the curtains a little bit, they're not real happy with McCuller. Yeah, I've heard that it's a little bit dicey there. Yeah. That I mean, relationship is soured. Yeah, I don't know if he's just pre- prepping himself for the NBA, didn't want to injure himself anymore, but so just so note they're gonna they're gonna go nuts in the portal. Like they will they have raised, from what I understand, a lot of money. So beware. Kansas is Kansas is going with two starting fives this offseason. Just you wait. Here we go. Aiden's on it. It's a month I've been thinking about next season, to be honest. Uh, not in the moments during the game, but, you know, uh, uh, you know, obviously we played – we had eight guys on scholarship, and, 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 and we played – I mean, that were – healthy there late and you know injuries are part of the game so that's not that's not an excuse but but we could have done uh, a much better job as a staff uh, 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 putting more guys out there that we could play uh, and so that's something that I've thought about for a long time and and the thing the thing about it is in basketball you know early on you can play through some things but the course of a season, there's a grind that goes with it, and and bodies get run downs, injuries occur. That's all part of it. And when you don't have as as much firepower, or as you know that that maybe you've had in past years, it certainly shows. It is what it is. I respect. He was just being I mean, honest. Yeah, it's honest. Every coach in the country who's worth a damn is already thinking about next year. It doesn't matter how good or bad they are; they all are. Oh yeah, you I, have to. the portal's open. That yeah, I mean it's the problem with the system. <laughs> it's open right now. Iowa State is contacting guys right now and allowed of to. Of course, and and they should because if yeah. you're not, you're gonna you're getting left behind. Uh, friend, Xavier your, Mitchell commitment over the weekend too. If, by the way, if you that don't, your friend McCaffrey. I'm sorry, did I say that? You're not wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, so. Iowa State next up. They're two and a half point favorite over Illinois. Did that surprise Rob, you? No, 
No, I, I would have had Iowa State favored in that game. Okay. In fact, I think Iowa State will win that game. I think I'm not confident, but like I think Iowa State will play in the Elite Eight this year. I like that Illinois matchup. That wasn't I the one too. that ever I I totally that ever I totally me. agree. If if you go they back could lose the game. We all know that, but I yep. I'm just saying like from a schematics, like data, all that good stuff, I like the matchup. If you look at if you listen to last week's podcast, it was we were very much like actually the basketball wise, the first three are okay. It's just having to play UConn and Boston that'll be the tough one. And well, uh, the, UConn looks really good. So let's see it though. I would I'll pay to see it. Dang it! Are Give you uh, you're you're not going to Boston, are you? Uh, not not. <laughs> it's my me and my wife's fault that our our six year old's birthday is on Friday. So what do you do? He's been looking forward to his birthday for months. See, I, I don't know. Problem. Elise was born the weekend of the Knoxville Nationals. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been since. It's, it's always right. her can't, birthday. I can't take him with. I would love to, but I can't. And I can't really go on my own. I would want to bring Crystal with me because she's very much a part of this whole situation. But we can't leave our six-year-old on his birthday at home, so I'm probably gonna have to sit this one We're out now. Take him to Boston if for his birthday. <laughs> yes. Why the hell not, son? Guys, your first your first airplane ride. We're going to Boston. We're going Go, to see the clones going playing to the, the Sweet clones. Sixteen, man. So I'm. I would say I'm doubtful, but um, it's my it's our own fault for our our parental scheduling, I guess. Nine months. Prior. Okay. Uh, real quick, I I did want to run down. This will be a little shorter show considering how late it is. I, th I think everybody will understand. Uh, a couple of our great sponsors, our buddy Colin Newell, of course, who uh, will save you money on your insurance. Don't take our word for it. We have all of our listeners now who are signing up. Our old buddy Chris signed up last week. Newell saved him $2,000 a year. $2,000. I'm going to ask Shipley to... Chris, excuse me, to buy me a plane ticket to Boston with that savings. Well, having booked a couple of them for me and Rob Gray, I would say that he's not going to have any savings left. I <laughs> say, what's the what was the market, real quick? Uh, it depends. Um, Eight hundred, nine hundred bucks round trip. Yeah, uh, Southwest had a cheaper one. Southwest had you can get there Southwest at a decent rate. Direct? No, nothing direct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing direct. I'm going through Detroit on Delta. Okay. I like the Detroit airport. It's one of the great parts I'm, about Detroit. Actually. I don't know if I've ever been to the Detroit it's a, it's airport. It's a great airport. My... I spent a lot of time in the Detroit airport. Well, anyways, <laughs> air travel, you can tell we're, <laughs> I'm like delirious. I'm going on no sleep. Um, uh, yeah, Colin Newell, Farm Bureau Colin Financial Newell, yeah. Services. Our guys, Jeff Kelderman, Kelderman Manufacturing. They're a big supporter of what we do, of course, here at cyclone fanatic the uh ames lager update what do we drink oh. our party on wednesday night was incredible we had almost 200 people there at a five o'clock on a wednesday in omaha which was insane what is the uh count how many beers did we drink so this was just at the beer can alley establishment so keep this in mind okay so i don't uh, Ames Lager is available throughout all of Omaha now, which is really cool because they distribute through, through Nebraska. So this is only Beer Can Alley, Annie's, and The Exchange. Okay. And in three day, four days, we sold 212 cases of Ames Lager. So that's 24 cans a case. So that's 5,088 beers at three bars in four days, which is incredible. That's a good I, number. I put 10,000 out there thinking, okay, like there's zero. Honestly, we only had like 6,000 beers at that place. And I thought we were going to be. <laughs> so we almost sold it all. <laughs> we almost sold it all. There was like eight cases left. Um, but then the other cool part, our guy I did Dan. my at... part. I can tell you. I uh, uh, I went and watched the women's game at Annie's and and I did my part. I, the, the pictures right before we the had. the robbery. The people. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm so that sucks. But the pictures people sent in of the beer towers and it made me so happy. It, it just was cool. made me happy. It was so cool. But ended up 
so I'm going to get the other cool part. So people that stopped by Lumen um, for Sierra Guy Dan over there, uh, they had their best weekend ever in the history of their That's brewery. That's great. They're really uh, small, too. So yeah, that's a huge super, deal. Super to and he's an Iowa State guy, which is really cool. So, yeah, it was a great day of drinking Ames Lager. And one other quick note I just want to mention on the on the, the collective front. We're actually raffling off two tickets for the Sweet 16. Thanks to our friends at uh, Northern Vessel Coffee Company nice. that donated those. So we've had about 50 entries. They're only $32 to enter, and you can get uh, two tickets for the Sweet 16 up in Boston. So that's pretty cool. That's open to open to anybody. Uh, and you can check that We Will Collective Twitter to find that out. I've never, uh, real quick to our to our audience, and don't do it in the chats here because I'm not going to see it. Um, but if I've never really, I've been to Boston one night, and it was just a drunken deal with the Braves game, me and Eddie Lyle. You went uh, to Fenway though, right? I remember we did. That. Yeah, I so the deal is I worked that day. This is when I was doing small town radio. I worked that morning at KMA, drove my ass to the Omaha airport, flew there, landed at like five. <laughs> we hammer it to Fenway for a like 605 first pitch. Watch the game from the Green Monster, which was incredible. Just an incredible sports moment. We drank until about 2 a.m., went to bed for like six hours, got up, and we drove down to Beth Page Black to the U.S. Open the oh next my gosh. day. It was an incredible... And it didn't like just rain? Oh, it just was horrible. We, we had tickets to the final round. We ended up watching the third round because the final round wasn't until Monday, and I didn't have like golf shoes either, so my feet were just blisters. Like it was just Ugh. really a terrible experience. But my point is, the only experience I've ever had in Boston is like stuff Drunk. I don't really. Yeah, yeah, you'll you'll I, like it. I don't think I'm gonna have a ton of time, but with these late yeah. tips, I'm thinking Thursday I may be able to walk around and like. I, and I'm a history buff. You'll I love, love it. I love yeah. the Revolutionary War. I've read books about it. So if anybody out there has like ideas or like for me and Rob Gray, he's another history guy too. I that's the only thing good about a 10 o'clock tip in like it's local time. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 10 o'clock local? Yeah, it's like a 910 tip central. Oh, I, thought it was, I thought it was 910. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no. It's a 1010 local tip out there. <sighs> okay. Well, so I'm my not point gonna... is, I've got all day on on Thursday now. Hey. Walk around and see Boston. And I, I, if anybody has any recommendations, I'm wide open to it. As uh, our guy Rossi would say, we sleep in May. Yeah, right. Like, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, my, I, you know, for real, like my wife is like, "Why are you guys doing a podcast at midnight?" I'm like, "Well, I, the women's I can't do? control. We can't go. With this I'm not going to podcast before the women's game because, like, that's stupid. We want to react, right? Yeah, I'll sleep in May, no. and then maybe I'll get I, scarlet fever again. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we'll keep everybody updated. No, I used to travel to Boston when I was with the foundation. Good friends of the Iowa State Foundation. I uh, have some great donors out there. Oh, my guy Kent. My guy Kent's a an avid listener of the Williams and Bloom pod. What so, will the crowd I, be like? What's the alumni uh, base? It's okay. What, what? It's the Northeast. If there's one pocket of the U S that isn't great, it's the Northeast. And not to say that there aren't, because there's Iowa state fans, like the slogan says everywhere, but man, it's Yukon's going to have the numbers. It's just realistic. Iowa state fans will be well represented. I bet Iowa state's as well represented as Illinois, but it won't even be anywhere close to Omaha. Well, and, I I think I think the pregame atmosphere on Thursday night in Omaha was the best neutral court field experience I've ever seen. How was Saturday? It was more on edge is the way I would Just put it. And nervous it, energy. And honestly, I think people were hungover. <laughs> on Saturday at honestly. five? It it was it was great, and it built up and got better and better as the game went on. But I think there was more nervous energy. You know, it's different when you're a two going against a fifteen. You know, yeah, like there's more on the line. We've been here for three days, or for some people, the four. the The pregame energy on Thursday was incredible. 
And yeah, Brent, you're right. Brent, there were way more Iowa State fans on Saturday because you had the whole. Like, I agree with you. I'm just saying, like, I thought the energy at Tip was incredible Thursday night, and I yeah. don't know. First round of the tournament, first day, everybody's amped up. I don't know what it was, but it was impressive. Iowa State fans, you did not surprise me. I knew you were going to do that when that little drawing came up and says Omaha, but I just thought it was just. I got it. It was it was quite the experience for anybody who went over there to the point where I knew a lot of people who had so much FOMO on Thursday that they're like, "Screw it, we're gonna going. choke down the tickets. We're going." Yep. And you weren't you were not disappointed if you did. Yeah, that's uh, no. I think interestingly, I'm just doing quick quick thinking in my head here. I don't believe Iowa State's played a Thursday Sweet 16 game since UCLA in 2000, which Iowa State won. Everything else has been Friday, if I remember. So maybe that's a good omen. So that was a, that was a actually, good sign. That was an early Thursday. And then Iowa State played San Antonio late, late on Thursday night, which I'm still thankful to my dad who let me to stay, allowed me to stay up. That game didn't tip off to like 945 Iowa time. And then Cameron Dollar just screwed me over. But that's okay. I'm not bitter. Um, no, I, sh- I, I think the crowd will be good. It'll be good. I, I, I'm curious what the UConn fans want, you know, cause there'll be a lot of them. Oh, they there. don't want Iowa state. I don't think so. Right. They don't want any piece of this team. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, like you're dumb. If you do, I, I am really look, I, I, I've got some, uh, got some UCLA vibes going to this game. Cause I think Illinois is going to get a lot of love, a lot of love for the next three days. Right. Because they just. They steamrolled both uh, Duquesne and 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 Moorhead. Duquesne sucks. Like they were not, not good. No. That was like a storybook thing. Their coach is retiring. Like they're not. They may be the worst team in the tournament, other than Virginia. BYU, bad job out of them. Bad job out of them. Uh, no, hey, at I least just, we I don't have to see them. Like I'd rather play Illinois than BYU, wouldn't you? I think so. And it, and I don't has. Illinois, last time Iowa State played Illinois was 2015 down in um, Destin, Florida. So it's been a while. No, I think I think this game sets up because uh, Illinois is going to get the love. You already heard their their. I listened to their press conference after the game, and those guys were like, "Yeah, we feel like we're playing great. We're playing great defensively. All these things." Like, yeah, I think I think Iowa State's it's the old famous Mike Tyson saying, "You you got to plan until you until you punch him in the mouth." Oh, they played him in eighteen. What? Oh, when was the last game, Aiden? Help me out here. November twentieth. I don't remember that game. Was that in? Hold on, hold on. Was that in Maui? Yes, that was a Taylor Horton Tucker game. Remember, he was playing. Yeah, was he's that playing in... all of his old like AAU. Yeah, it stuff. was in Maui. Yeah. Then I, hey, I was right. Niceville, Niceville's destined the same area. Uh, the day. Oh, that's right. That was the Taylor. That that let Taylor had. Into the he NBA. was like the leading scorer in that game. It was like a big storyline. I think that's right. Thank you, Aiden. So been, I watched uh, that game with Sean Keeler. I not Maui, give me an think. Iowa State game in the last fifteen years. I'll tell you what I was doing, who I was with, what I everything about the day. That's how I remember everything in this world. Or that's why we get along, buddy. Uh, <laughs> this is crazy on that day because I remember listening to this now. I was driving in a rental car from Detroit to Ontario, Canada for the Bridget Carlton game in Ontario. Oh, I remember that. And then you had all the equipment problems. Yeah, because I couldn't get past the firewall in Canada. Yeah. Broadcasting is fun, kids. I remember listening to your game and it was you were on like the cell pack type thing. Yeah, or... yeah I was I finally got on, and then the problem was I was I didn't have a have an analyst. And Yep, I remember Man. that uh, because Nan- we were doing you, those games together at that point, right? Yep, that was we were. In that era. And you, okay. you had we were all over the place. But I Thank God it was I, you up there. Well, I wouldn't have been able to troubleshoot that. So TMI because it's it's twelve fifteen on a on a Monday morning now, and no one's going to listen to this, right? <laughs> so well, there's currently over four thousand people watching. So. Okay, well then whatever. We're all friends here. So I spent so much time troubleshooting with the IT guy in Canada that I didn't have time to go to the restroom before the game. And I didn't have an analyst. And from the second quarter on, I was dying. And I, I was, I almost just like, I mean, it was like, tell the 
producer and Jeff City like, hey, I, I need... didn't I didn't know what to do. I, I almost went the dumb and dumber route, but I didn't want to get arrested. Like, I, man, oh, yeah, by so... whipping your penis out, out there at a <laughs> women's basketball game. <laughs> Correct. Thank you for saying that out loud. Um, but no, so I made it through. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just our play by play guy peeing in a Pepsi <laughs> bottle. <laughs> and I had some to, to n- make a nightcap. I had some poutine that night. The, the oh, it's a Canadian yeah, dish. Yeah. It's a Canadian dish. I found a quaint little seafood spot. I'm gonna go and hit up in Boston, right down from the hotel. Are you a seafood guy? Are you see, are you it. gonna do clam clam chowder? Are you a clam chowder guy? Oh, I love it all. Yeah, love it all. Really? Okay. Yeah, mom, man. I mean, we should grow up in South Carolina. Well, isn't we ate that stuff all the time? South Carolina chowder is a little different than Boston chowder. Well, a little spicier, a little, okay. little more gumbo-y. A little gumbo, get a little gumbo in there. Yeah, Steve's It'll backing me on this. Steve said that the Duquesne fans were nasty. He says you can tell they were the from Duquesne Pittsburgh. Fans? They were dicks. <laughs> I'm telling you, like Why? I was just around. I had a, I had a run-in with one little... of their assistant coaches on did, press row. They were dicks. Did they steal your laptop or your Maybe. materials? Maybe. You know, the thing that sucks, and I'm not going to tell the whole story because I'm not ready to yet. They stole one thing that mattered. I've been working on the book, right? We've all heard about the book. And my notebook full of all my handwritten notes from all of my interviews that I've done. Why would you steal that? I don't know. But it's all gone. Two years worth of handwritten notes. And like, it just like, I sat in my hotel room that morning and bawled like a baby. Now, the good thing is my computer and all that stuff, you have a cloud, like all that stuff safe. But it was just like, take anything, right? <laughs> Here, take my credit cards. I'll, I'll shut them yeah, down. Yeah, I'll, I'll shut you know? those down. Like, don't take that. What are you going to do with the... Your I handwriting what... isn't even that great. I think what they did was just rummage through a bunch of people's stuff and then keep what they wanted and then you throw crap throw around everything out. but i didn't get it back and and i'm like i keep praying that somebody will see it will it will that the right person will find it somewhere oh my god and i'm sorry put two and two together but uh just like physically wanted to vomit on on saturday i do morning. I do right now, man. But anyways, the clones uh, won. The, the, the game the must 16. go on. The game goes on. If the clones right. would have lost to Washington State, that, that would have been, been one of the worst days of my life. Would would that have been worse than the day when Iowa State lost to Kansas in football in Lawrence and then went home and lost to Iona in basketball? That was ranked. a bad day. That was a bad day. Would it have been worse than... I'm not. No, I'm not going to do it. No, we're going to have. We're going to have a positive. We're going to have positive attitude. No, the day here. ended up being pretty good. I mean, Iowa yeah. State wins. Yeah. Um, everybody's happy, and then we're going to rally the troops. And then David Carr won on Saturday night, which was awesome for him to get another national championship. Boy, what about Dresser? You know, back in the top five. You know, it it, it seemed like Crazy. not very long ago where it was just you were like. You know, you were you were longing for those days. I was having a conversation with a Iowa State employee, um, a athletics employee, and man, like, I it really hit me because I loved wrestling when Kale was a coach, and even Bobby sure. Douglas before that. Like our my my college, I always went to the wrestling, I, I went to the big duels and stuff, and I grew up in a town that's big into wrestling. The Jackson era just really just beat me down, I realized. And now that they're back like doing because I'm a I'm I'm like your quintessential casual wrestling fan, right? Like I'm not one of the diehards. I'm not claiming to be that, but like I was the guy you had, right? Where I'm paying for my tickets and I'm buying yep. popcorn and I'm there. Like I you had me. And dressers got me back. Like I'm, I'm a hundred percent back. Like, and that's why I did this podcast for Iowa everywhere last week where like, it pisses me off that I have to try so hard to watch 
in NCAA championship wrestling during the first two days of the NCAA tournament. Like it's so stupid. It is so that was frustrating. Dumb. Yeah. What are they doing? And then they buried they buried the very meaningful matches on the plus. I'm like, I I don't know what one to watch. It's, it's just, too yeah. hard. It was very hard to do. Yes. And I, mean, I have I'm, a job in sports. Like I can't yeah. like if you work at yeah, just a regular fan. Right. You know, like it's hard. It's hard to do all this stuff. And now like women's basketball is so much more popular than it was. Like we got to yep. find a way to stagger these things out. Totally a little agree. Bit. Totally agree. Do it. Honestly, pair it with the first four. Like I'll watch wrestling championships over the first four. I actually had somebody nine. gave me a really good idea that they should start the wrestling season like three weeks earlier. And yeah. basically you do NCAA championships like in the middle of February, like, and you feature it. it would get I don't so know. Much like more, I, there's gotta yeah. be a way to, I mean, it's, I mean, part of me is like, and it's unfortunate because wrestling, you know, I don't know if it's losing popularity necessarily nationally, but they put their main event, which is the NCAA championships against arguably the largest sporting event in the world. It's like, that's just, it's insane. You, not, it's not, not, not going to do it. Um, but just and I'll get on the, that you'll, front, it, it, you 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 will get the response real quick. You will get the response. Hey, but wrestling fans here. don't care about what was that? Yeah, that they're going to say they'll, we, they'll, this is we've always done this. Yeah, it, it, and my reaction is yeah, but we're trying to grow this thing and we need to attract other people, right? Like we we want to make this bigger. That's what women's basketball has been doing. They're not burying all their games like they used to, right? Like they're out. They're on Fox on a Saturday night primetime, right? Like it's growing the sport. More people are seeing it. You're not burying it on ESPN Plus during the first day of the NCAA tournament. Like it's insane. Well, well look at how many people watch that Iowa, Iowa State wrestling duel on ESPN. Yeah. A bunch. Well, I mean, come on now. It was so something that I think would be wise. But again, maybe I'm not the one to answer that question. But I will say. I think this weekend was a credit to all of Cycle Nation and what State's been able to achieve. I, 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 you could argue there's ne- never been a better time to be an Iowa State Athletics fan than right now. I mean, I think that argument is 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 very logical. You have obviously a men's basketball team that's gone to two sweet Sweet Sixteens in three years, which is crazy. TJ is the first coach to go to two sweet 16s of any coach in Iowa state history. You have a yeah. football program. That's never been better. Um, a football program that is probably going to be picked in the upper half of the big 12. And if you talk to anybody in the, on the staff, they have all eyes on let's get to a playoff. That is absolutely the goal. I don't know if they're saying who knows what they're saying. Like, I don't not to speak for them, but I think that's absolutely a possibility. And you have a women's basketball team that was damn close to just beating Stanford on its home floor with a bunch of freshmen to make make a Sweet 16, a wrestling team that just finished in the top five and is still going to have a lot of talent coming back. I mean, has it ever been a better time to be an Iowa State no. fan? I don't think so. Oh, I don't. Man. I really don't. And it's just a credit to everybody for. And the great thing is, you know, unlike maybe 10 years ago, we were like, well, the Hoiberg thing, you know, this thing is, gonna, is great right now, but things going to crash. It doesn't feel like we're on the crashing end. It feels like we're still on the ascension for all these things. Yeah. You could argue, and I, and I am arguing, I think the programs, and I think Iowa State can still make a Final Four this year, don't get me wrong, but you mentioned the kid they just got in the recruits. I'm telling you guys, Iowa State's going to be very aggressive in the portal, uh, which is great. Uh, I think next year's going to be pretty cool. I think on the women's side, I obviously just got another recruit today, a really highly touted international kid. Yep. Um, football's doing great. Had another in-state commitment this weekend. Got him from under old, uh, old, old I, the folks out east. And uh, we got to tell these kids to stop doing their commitment announcements on the NCAA tournament. Yeah, too. yeah, it's I lost, say, buddy. Yeah, I, I say, come on, Jack. Um, but no, I think. Things Xavier are going did really that well too. Right it's like, yeah, you should, you should have done it after on. the game, and then it's like, ah, uh, yeah, whatever. I'm just but giving I, them. I just think time. it, it's it's proof that you can still do some great things here in Ames, and just extra special. And this weekend, man, how much fun did you have as an Iowa State fan this weekend? You had to love it. Even that loss with the women is still like, gosh, you made us proud though, and that's yeah. what it's all about. So I have, I'm just super bullish on, on the future of Iowa State. 
your uh, tweet from Tommy. You got to look at this screen here. Tommy Birch yeah, tweeted. I see it. Uh, you go ahead. For, former Iowa State quarterback Brock Purdy went into the locker room after the women's game and and said, uh, "You wear Iowa State, keep your head up," which is awesome. Which is and man, how cool! We didn't mention that Brock being there. Yeah, it's awesome. Is, and then our buddy Arnaud was there on uh, on Friday. Oh, was he? Uh, I didn't yeah, see that. Uh, yep. Yeah, so it's just like, God, I just love. I mean, I just love this place. Like, I, I just love that we're all do. We're figuring this out together, and it makes the good times even better. Let's end it on that. It's uh, twelve thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I gotta have these kids up at six thirty. Sorry, but same, buddy. Um. Thanks to Aiden Wyatt staying up late. He's the. I do want to give him a ton of credit. So we're we we kind of have a different strategy and how we're covering these things, and we really want to get reaction out as quickly as possible like from the locker room and stuff and aiden's been integral so basically i'm shooting these videos with the guys and then aiden has them up on twitter within like five minutes and it's i thought our coverage was awesome uh, this year uh based on our little process that we have so we couldn't do it without him being back there so thank you buddy uh, i also want to give a shout out to jacqueline cordova she had a Tough weekend. Her mom was in the hospital, so she never got down to Kansas City, which broke my heart because she puts in so much work yep. on the um, wrestling front, and she didn't get down there. And but she she was literally working to cover wrestling yeah, for you, you would, all would from know. her mom's hospital room, which it she didn't have to like. She could have said, "Hey, we're not going to do that." I'm not, I, and I, we would have been like, "Okay, we'll figure it out." And she didn't want to do that, so like, man. Uh, really, really awesome team. Connor's, um, he's going to be up all night, I'm sure, out in California. So thanks hey, to everybody. Hey, and C-Dub, give yourself some credit, would you? <laughs> I know this is a, it's a tireless <laughs> time of year. Thank you. Uh, you're you're hip-hopping from Kansas City to Omaha, and, and still I, I know what the kid situation is, and now you get to go to Boston. So uh, kudos to you and Appreciate the product. It. And the and the the company that you built to make this all possible, and and I honestly, guys, I don't I don't see this say this um, lightheartedly. Iowa State's growth, in my opinion, is a lot to do with Cycle and Fanatic. I think they go hand in hand. I don't think Iowa State's growth is possible without the growth of Cycle and Fanatic. I think it's, and the coverage has never been better. And look at where Iowa State is now. Um, the season ticket has never been like oh, this all th- it all works together, and that's I it think does. the coolest part of the ownership group with Fanatic with you, with all of us doing this, and 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 like what Fenley would say in the Iowa State way is just you know, it makes it extra special. So hey man, get some rest, Thanks. maybe get get some get some sleep we, on the plane, and we'll try and find that cult book for you. I appreciate that. We uh, we did I, I did have a cool story. It was a guy. Uh, I met a couple guys at our deal on Wednesday who had flown in a day early from Pittsburgh, from Pennsylvania and Denver just to come to our Cyclone Fanatic in We Will event, which they wanted to meet everybody. They wanted to say hi and have a beer. And it was, it was very touching. Those things always like, they always mean more to me than the games and meeting all you guys. So we appreciate it. Hopefully we can all go down to the desert in a week. How about that? I'm uh we're going to throw the, the world's biggest banger if we make it to Phoenix, everybody. Look out. Oh, Easter Sunday reaction pod will be <laughs> epic, if that's the case. Can you imagine? Yeah. We're just going to be throwing bottles of Cody Road around the office. Oh, uh, love it, man. Hey, safe travels. We'll... <laughs> Thank you. We'll talk yeah, and we'll we'll do our uh, we'll certainly do our midweek pod to to lead up to the game on Thursday as well. So thanks to everybody for staying up. Like literally four thousand of you are still up with us at twelve thirty in the morning. It's incredible. Uh, thanks to our presenting sponsor, Mechdyne, and we will be back later this week here on the Cyclone Fanatic.